I ate up for posting screen recordings of my husband talking to his mistress who's also married. I don't think anyone goes into a marriage expecting to end up in this kind of mess. I certainly didn't. When I met my husband, I thought I'd hit the jackpot, a good-looking, charming guy who seemed to have it all together. He was the kind of man who could make people laugh easily. Who had a warm smile and a way of making you feel like you were the only person in the room when he looked at you. I fell for him hard. No question about it. I thought I was marrying my best friend. Someone I could count on. But, wow, was I in for a surprise. Looking back, there were red flags, small things I brushed off. Moments I ignored because I was too in love to think straight. He was attentive at first. Loving and supportive, or at least he seemed that way. We had so many plans. So many dreams together. We talked about buying a house. Having kids. Building a life. For the first year or so, I thought I'd really found my partner for life. Then, little by little, things started to shift. I began noticing patterns I hadn't seen before. Strange excuses. Disappearing for hours without any clear explanation. He'd act like I was crazy if I questioned him. Like I was being paranoid or insecure. He had this way of spinning things. Making me second-guess myself. Until I felt like I was the one with the problem. And maybe that was the first crack in the facade. The way he made me feel guilty for things that didn't quite add up. The infidelity came to light about a year ago. I'll never forget that day. I'd suspected something was off for a while. But I kept telling myself I was being dramatic. That it was all in my head. But when I found the messages on his phone. All that denial crumbled. There it was. Plain as day. Texts from another woman. Saying things no married man should be hearing from someone who isn't his wife. My heart felt like it had been torn out of my chest. At first, he swore it was a mistake. That it meant nothing. And I wanted so badly to believe him. I wanted to save my marriage. To fix whatever was broken. I thought, maybe if I forgive him. Maybe if I'm patient. We can move past this. And I did forgive him. Or at least I tried. I pushed myself to let it go. To move forward. For a while, I even convinced myself that we were healing. That he was trying to be a better man. But that wasn't the end of it. I kept catching him in lies. Subtle ones, but lies nonetheless. I'd see him hiding his phone, going out at odd hours, brushing off my questions with vague answers. And as much as I hated to admit it, I knew, I knew he was still lying, still seeing other women behind my back. I just didn't have the strength to confront it again. On top of that, there was the addiction. That was another side of him I hadn't signed up for. And it felt like it came out of nowhere. He started staying out late, drinking too much. And when he came home, he'd sometimes be in a state I didn't recognize. There were nights he wouldn't come home at all. I'd lie in bed, staring at the ceiling, wondering if this was the life I'd chosen, wondering if I was going to spend my entire marriage feeling so alone, so betrayed, as if that wasn't enough. The abuse started creeping in too, subtle. At first, he'd make snide comments about how I spent money, criticize me for how I kept the house. He'd guilt trip me over the smallest things, making me feel like I was always doing something wrong. The worst was the way he controlled our finances, always keeping me in the dark about money, making me feel like I was indebted to him for every little thing. And he was so good at it. So smooth, that I started to believe maybe he was right. Maybe I really was the one to blame for everything going wrong. I felt trapped, miserable, but still, I stayed, for so long. I convinced myself that this was just a rough patch. That maybe if I was more supportive, more understanding, he'd change. I thought that if I could just hold on a little longer, he'd eventually come to his senses. After all, he wasn't always like this. I clung to the memory of the man I'd fallen in love with. Hoping he'd come back somehow. And through it all, I kept quiet. I didn't want anyone to know. To the outside world, we were still the perfect couple. He was the charming husband. And I was the supportive wife. He had everyone fooled, our friends. His family, even my own family. They saw him as this great guy. And I just couldn't bring myself to shatter that illusion. So I kept everything inside. Dealing with it all on my own. Now, looking back on it, I feel like a stranger to myself. I don't recognize the woman who kept putting herself through that hell. And yet, here I am, still trying to make sense of everything. Still living under the same roof with him as we try to finalize this divorce. We're going through the motions, waiting for the paperwork, still sharing a home but not really sharing a life anymore. It's like I'm watching a bad dream play out in slow motion. Wondering how I got here and how I let things go this far. But there's one thing that's changed. I'm done pretending. I'm done covering for him. Done keeping his secrets. And I don't know if it's anger, or maybe some strange need for justice. But a part of me just wants the world to see the truth. To see him for who he really is. Because for too long, I let myself believe his lies. But now, now I'm ready for something different. So here we are, both still in this house. Living separate lives under the same roof. It's a strange, miserable kind of limbo. I can't even begin to explain the tension. Every little interaction feels heavy. Like we're both playing parts in some twisted show neither of us wants to be in. Some days, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. Carefully sidestepping any little comment or glance that might set him off. Other days, I just avoid him entirely. Staying in the bedroom with the door closed. Pretending he doesn't exist, but no matter what I do, the weight of his presence hangs over everything. It's like living with a shadow. 
To everyone else, though, he's still the good guy. That's what really gets me. He's got this whole act down pat, playing the attentive husband. The upstanding friend, he's convinced almost everyone we know that he's the kind, charming man I once believed him to be. It's honestly impressive, in a horrifying way, how he's managed to keep everyone fooled. They see him smiling, cracking jokes, being the life of the party, and they think they know him. But they don't see the way he treats me when no one's around. They don't see the man who's stolen my peace of mind, who makes me doubt myself at every turn, who's turned my life upside down. The way he uses money as a tool to control me is one of the worst parts. When we first got married, I didn't realize how tightly he planned to keep the purse strings. It was subtle at first. Little comments here and there about staying within our budget or being financially responsible. But over time, it turned into something else. Every penny I spent became a point of contention, something he'd use to criticize me, to make me feel guilty. If I bought something for myself, a coffee, a new shirt, anything, he'd find a way to make me feel like I was irresponsible or wasteful. And if I brought up our finances or asked about our savings, he'd brush me off, saying it wasn't something I needed to worry about. He'd always remind me that he was the one handling things. That I should trust him. And for a long time, I did. But eventually, I started feeling like a guest in my own life. Like I was living on his terms. It wasn't until I'd already sunk too deep that I realized how carefully he'd crafted this world to keep me dependent on him. To make sure I couldn't leave, even if I wanted to. And then there's the emotional manipulation. I can't even count how many times he's twisted my words turned things around on me, made me feel like I was the one in the wrong. If I dared to question him, he'd find a way to make me feel small, stupid, like I was overreacting. He'd call me paranoid or insecure, reminding me of all the times he'd forgiven me for my flaws. Every time I brought up his infidelity, he'd find a way to blame me for it, saying I was too distant or too busy with work. Somehow, everything that went wrong in our marriage was my fault, at least. That's how he made it seem. But the worst part? He's so good at it that sometimes I actually believe him. Sometimes I think, maybe I am the problem, maybe I'm not enough, that's the trap of living with a narcissist, they make you question yourself until you're not sure what's real anymore. So here I am, stuck in this mess, waiting for the divorce to go through, watching him keep up his charming act for everyone around us, it's sickening, really, I see him talking to our friends, playing the victim in all of this, making little comments about how, hard, this has been for him, as if he's some poor, innocent man caught in the middle of something he didn't cause. And people buy it, they actually buy it, they come up to me with sympathetic smiles, telling me they're sorry things didn't work out, like he's some martyr for putting up with me. I keep thinking about what it would be like to finally be free of him. To not have to deal with the gaslighting, the manipulation, the constant feeling of being judged and controlled. But then I remember that he's done such a good job of hiding who he is that. Once we're divorced, he'll just keep fooling people. He'll find someone new, someone else to control, someone else to make feel small. And that thought makes me furious. After everything he's done, he still gets to walk away unscathed. Still gets to wear his mask in front of everyone who doesn't know him like I do. I've thought about exposing him, really exposing him, letting everyone see the man he truly is. I have enough evidence of his lies, his cheating, his double life. He doesn't know I have access to his TikTok account. Doesn't realize I've seen all those sickening messages between him and his mistress. Those plans they're making to run off together. Their little exchanges about keeping things a secret. It's all there, documented, waiting to be used. Sometimes, late at night, I sit there looking at the screen recordings I've taken of their conversations. Imagining what it would be like to post them online. To let everyone see the truth. Part of me thinks it would be the ultimate revenge. The only way to finally take control back from him. I'd get to shatter his perfect little facade. Show the world what he really is. A liar. A cheat. An abusive narcissist who's built his life on deception. But I'm torn. I wonder if that would make me as bad as him. I worry that people would judge me. That they'd say I'm stooping to his level. That I'm just bitter and vengeful. Part of me feels guilty for even considering it. I was raised to keep my problems to myself. To handle things quietly, with dignity. But dignity feels like a luxury I can't afford right now. After everything he's put me through, I don't want to be quiet anymore. I don't want to keep protecting him. Maybe that's the real dilemma here. I feel trapped between the person I used to be, the one who tried to do everything right. To keep things together, and the person I'm becoming. The person who's tired of being used. Who's ready to stand up for herself. Even if it means breaking the rules a little. And maybe that's why I'm even considering posting those recordings. It feels like the only way to show him that I'm done being his victim. So here I am, stuck in the same house as him, watching him go about his life as if nothing's wrong, while I wrestle with whether or not to expose him. Part of me thinks I'd be doing the world a favor, but another part of me worries about what it would cost me. Either way, it feels like there's no clean way out of this. And maybe, after everything he's done, that's the way it's supposed to be. Finding out about the mistress felt like one of those moments that splits your life into before and after. The, before, me had tried to hold it together, to keep believing we could work things out, that I could somehow be enough for him, but when I found those messages, I knew without a doubt that he'd never really been invested in us. 
I knew he'd cheated before, there'd been that big blow up a year ago, but he'd sworn it was over. That he'd made a mistake. That he'd learned from it. And because I wanted to believe him, I forgave him, I let it go, and I forced myself to move on. But this time, seeing the conversations between him and her, the same woman he'd betrayed me with before, it broke something in me. She wasn't just some random fling, she was someone he had history with. Someone who had a husband of her own. They both knew exactly what they were doing, and neither of them cared about the destruction they were leaving behind. The worst part was, she seemed to be just as deep in it as he was. Pretending to be happy in her own marriage while secretly planning their little getaways. I couldn't believe I was seeing the words, right there on his screen. It was sickening. I'll never forget the first time I read their messages. I hadn't even been snooping. He'd left his phone on the counter, and a notification popped up. I don't know what came over me, but something told me to check it. Maybe I'd sensed the lies piling up, felt the weight of his secrets, even if I couldn't prove anything. But when I saw her name and that string of heart emojis, my stomach dropped. I opened the messages, my hands shaking, feeling like I was peeling back layers of deceit that had been hiding right under my nose. What I found in that conversation was worse than I could have imagined. They were talking about how they couldn't wait to be together. How much they missed each other. She even joked about her husband not knowing anything, laughing about how clueless he was, just as I'd been, and he was right there with her, promising to meet her soon, planning all the details. They talked about hotels, dates, ways to cover their tracks. I felt like I was reading some twisted romance novel, except I was the one getting trampled in the story. And as if that wasn't enough, I found the recordings. They were on TikTok, hidden in plain sight, almost as if he thought I'd never look there. His account was connected to my email, he'd probably forgotten that, and when I logged in, it was all right there. The videos, the private messages, everything. It was like he'd created this secret digital life with her, right alongside ours. I was numb, scrolling through message after message, watching clips of him smiling, flirting, saying things to her that he'd never said to me. Part of me wanted to laugh at the irony of it. I mean, here was this man who'd made me feel like I was somehow inadequate. Like I was the one failing him, and yet he was the one sneaking around, cheating with someone who was also married, and the way they talked, like they were the victims. Like their love was somehow justified because they were soulmates trapped in the wrong marriages. It made me want to scream. They both had perfectly good people in their lives. And yet they chose to lie. To betray. To treat those who loved them like disposable pieces. I went back and forth between feeling sick to my stomach and feeling this cold. Detached anger. It was like I was standing outside of myself. Watching the whole thing play out like a scene in a movie. I kept thinking. Is this really my life? Is this what it's come to? I'd married this man, trusted him, loved him, and here he was, living a double life, keeping up this act with her while coming home to me as if nothing was wrong. The worst part was, she knew about me, she knew we were married, and she didn't care, she had a husband, a family, and yet she was willing to risk all of that just to keep this pathetic charade going. They'd laugh about how easy it was to hide things, how clueless we all were, it was like they took some twisted pleasure in knowing they were fooling us. And as I sat there, reading through those messages, I felt this overwhelming urge to do something anything, to make them face the consequences. I'll be honest, I wanted revenge, I wanted to show everyone what they really were, it wasn't just about him anymore, it was about both of them. She was as guilty as he was, maybe even more, because she knew the pain of betrayal and yet had no problem inflicting it on someone else. I imagined posting the recordings, letting her husband see the truth, letting everyone see the two of them for who they really were. It was tempting, so tempting, but then I'd think about the fallout, about how public it would all become, about how everyone would see not just them but also me see me as the betrayed wife. The one who'd been wronged. Part of me didn't want that kind of attention, didn't want to be pitied or looked at like some tragic figure. I just wanted to take back the power they'd both stolen from me. To make them pay for the lies and the manipulation. I kept the recordings. I didn't delete a single one. They're my proof, my armor, the only evidence I have that this isn't just in my head. That I didn't imagine any of it. Sometimes, late at night, I'd play one of them back, listening to his voice, hearing the way he spoke to her, the way he laughed with her, as if he didn't have a care in the world, and it would remind me why I couldn't just forgive, why I couldn't let this go. But even with all the proof, with every word, every message, I felt torn, exposing them would bring some satisfaction, maybe even some justice, but it would also make everything messier. The truth would be out, but so would I and I'd be the one left to pick up the pieces of a life he'd already shattered. It was a decision I couldn't make lightly, and I kept going back and forth, wondering if I had it in me to actually go through with it. For now, the recordings stay hidden, a reminder of what he's done and of the strength it's taken for me to hold back. I don't know if I'll ever find the courage to post them. To let the world see him for what he really is. But having them, knowing they're there, it feels like a small victory. Like maybe, one day, I'll get the closure I need. Whether through exposing him or simply walking away with my head held high. Either way, I'm done pretending. I can't lie, there's a part of me that wants everyone to know. All of it, every time I sit there with those recordings. 
Reading those messages, I feel this burning urge to do something. To show the world what he's been hiding. After everything he's put me through. All the lies, the gaslighting, the cheating. Why should he get to walk away from this unscathed? Why should she? They both chose to do this. To make a mockery of the commitments they supposedly hold so dear. While acting like the rest of us are too clueless to see the truth. Some nights, I just sit there, phone in hand, watching one of the videos I recorded of their conversations. Feeling that temptation build, I can practically see how it would go down in my head, posting the videos. Maybe a screenshot of one of the messages. The whole thing out there for everyone to see. People would know, they'd finally see the real him. The man behind the fake smiles and the, good guy, act. They'd know he's a liar. A cheat. Someone who has no regard for the people who care about him. And her husband, he'd finally see who she really is too. Maybe he'd feel the same betrayal I felt. And she'd get a taste of the hurt she's so casually dished out. But then, right when I'm about to do it, I start thinking about all the consequences. I know there would be fallout, big fallout. Posting something like this would be a bombshell. It wouldn't just be a blow to him or her. It would ripple through our entire social circle. Maybe even beyond that, and I'd be caught up in that fallout too. People wouldn't just see him differently, they'd see me differently too. I'd be the one who, outed, him. The one who aired all the dirty laundry. And that label doesn't come without its own baggage. I go back and forth on it all the time. One minute, I feel completely justified, after all. They're the ones who did this. Not me. They're the ones who chose to lie. To betray. To make a mockery of our lives. I keep thinking that if they had the guts to do this. To treat me like I'm disposable. Then they should at least have the guts to face the consequences. But the other part of me worries that maybe. Just maybe, exposing them like this would make me look vindictive. Like I'm trying to get back at him out of spite. And yet, I can't shake the feeling that exposing him would be the only way to reclaim some control. To feel like I'm not just a victim in his story but someone who can stand up and say. No, I deserve better. Because right now, it feels like I'm stuck in his lie. Waiting on this divorce. Waiting to start over. While he goes on living his life like none of this has any impact on him. It's infuriating to think he can just keep going. That he can keep fooling people. Convincing them he's the good guy while I'm left to pick up the pieces of the life he tore apart. And that's where my mind keeps circling back to, justice. I want him to face what he's done. To look people in the eye and feel even an ounce of the humiliation and shame he's made me feel. I want her to feel the impact of her actions too. For her husband to see the real her. The version of her who has no problem tearing apart another marriage just because she can. Why should they get to walk away without consequences? Why should they be spared the truth? But then there's my own life to think about. I imagine what my family would say. How my friends might react. Some of them know what I've been going through, but not all. There are people who don't see the full picture, who might think I'm overreacting, or that I'm making it messier than it needs to be. There's that fear, that nagging voice telling me that exposing them could backfire, that instead of getting justice, I might end up being painted as the angry, bitter ex-wife, and I'm not sure I'm ready for that either. So here I am, stuck with all this evidence and nowhere to go with it. I could take it to her husband, that would be the simplest option. I could quietly pass it along, let him deal with the fallout on his end, but even that feels like a violation. Like I'm playing a part in destroying someone else's life. And I don't know him well enough to predict how he'd react. He could be furious with me for telling him. He might even side with her. People are unpredictable. Especially when they're hurt. And I don't want to add another layer of chaos to my life right now. Still, the urge to do something won't go away. It's like a splinter lodged deep in my mind. Reminding me every day that he's out there. Living his lie. Convincing everyone he's this great guy. And every time I see him acting like nothing's wrong. Like I don't exist. It only makes me want to act more. I want him to feel the consequences of what he's done. To understand that he can't just do this to people and walk away unscathed. I'm not sure where that leaves me. Do I stay silent? Let it go? Let them live their lives without knowing the impact of their actions? Or do I expose them? Take back some of the control he's stolen from me? And risk the fallout? It feels like either way. I'm losing something. If I stay silent, he wins. But if I speak up, I risk looking like the villain in my own story. For now, the recordings stay locked away. Safe but accessible. A constant reminder of what he's done and what I'm choosing to hold back. Maybe one day I'll decide to use them. Or maybe I'll just keep them as my own private proof. A testament to everything I've endured. Either way, I know this. I'm not the same person I was before. And whether or not the world ever sees the truth, I'm ready to take back my life. To find a way forward that isn't defined by his lies. The more I sit with this decision, the harder it feels to make. I keep thinking, what if I'm the one in the wrong here? That sounds ridiculous. I know, but after years of being manipulated, after everything he's said to make me feel small, part of me can't help but wonder if maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe putting it out there for everyone to see is just petty revenge. And I'm sinking to his level by even considering it. There's this constant tug of war inside me. One voice saying, expose him, he deserves it for everything he's done to you. And the other whispering, but is that really who you want to be? I've always thought of myself as a strong person. Someone who handles things with dignity and doesn't drag others down. But dignity doesn't feel very satisfying when I'm left to pick up the pieces of a life he's shattered without so much as a second thought. 
Sometimes I feel so sure about exposing him. Like I could hit, post, in an instant and watch it all blow up. I imagine the relief that might come with it. The weight lifting off my shoulders as everyone finally sees him for who he really is. I'd no longer have to bear this secret alone. I'd finally get to stop pretending. Stop covering up for him. And let the truth come out. It would be justice. Or at least that's how it feels in my angrier moments. But then, there's the other side. What would people say? How would they see me? A part of me is terrified that instead of seeing him as the manipulator he is. They'd look at me like I'm the crazy, bitter ex who couldn't let go. Would they even understand? Or would they just think I'm airing dirty laundry? Acting out of spite? The last thing I want is to come across as vindictive. As if I'm letting him win by dragging myself down to his level. And, of course, there's my family to think about. My parents are private people. They don't know everything. But they know enough to hate what I've been through. I can only imagine their reaction if I told them I posted those recordings. I can practically hear my mother's voice telling me to be the bigger person, or reminding me that revenge never ends well. I know she's probably right, but sometimes, being the bigger person, feels like another way of saying. Just let him walk all over you. Then there's the idea of her husband finding out. The thought of him watching those recordings, reading the messages, seeing the truth laid bare, it feels like justice for both of us. In a way, he deserves to know, but at the same time, he's innocent in all of this. Just like I was, I know what it's like to have your world come crashing down. And the last thing I want is to be the one to destroy someone else's life. Especially someone who's already been hurt enough by her betrayal. It's like I'm standing on a cliff. Knowing that one step forward could take us both down. And I don't know if I can live with that on my conscience. I also can't help but think about the day-to-day -day aftermath. If I post it, if I go through with exposing them, then what? My phone would blow up with calls, messages from friends, family, maybe even people who barely know us but love a good scandal. I'd be, that woman, the one who couldn't keep her private pain private. Who turned her marital issues into a spectacle? It would follow me, maybe forever, like a scar that never quite heals. And part of me wonders if that scar would be worth it. If I'd be able to move on or if this would just tie me to him in another twisted way. Then again, if I stay quiet, doesn't that mean he wins? Doesn't that mean I just let him go? Let him continue this lie? Continue fooling everyone around him? It feels like a betrayal to myself. To everything I've been through. To stay silent. And yet, the idea of throwing myself into the fire just to expose him. I don't know if that's the kind of closure I want. I go back and forth like this. Caught in this endless loop of what ifs and maybes. I wish I could be certain. That I could feel some kind of clarity. Some sign telling me what the right thing to do is. But all I have is this churning feeling of anger and guilt. This ache to take control. Balanced against the fear of becoming someone I don't recognize. In the end, I'm left with one question. What's worth more to me? My peace or my revenge? Because right now, it feels like I can't have both. And the truth is, I'm scared. I'm scared that no matter what I choose. It won't be enough, that I'll either regret the choice I didn't make or be haunted by the one I did. For now, the recordings stay locked away. But I know this isn't over. I know that as long as he's out there, living his life with that smug smile, pretending he's untouchable, this feeling won't go away. And maybe one day, when I'm ready, when I've made peace with myself, I'll finally know what to do. Until then, all I can do is wait, hoping that the answer will come to me in time. It took a long time to get here. Days, weeks, maybe even months if I'm honest. But eventually, I reached a breaking point, one of those moments where I realized that holding onto all this anger, all this hurt, was costing me more than I was willing to give. I'd been pouring so much of myself into this internal battle, obsessing over what he'd done and fantasizing about exposing him, that I'd barely been living my own life. And one night, as I was lying awake, staring at the ceiling yet again, I realized that I was tired, not just tired of him and his lies, but tired of the hold he still had on me. It hit me then, like a cold, hard truth I couldn't avoid anymore. I'd been letting him win. All those nights obsessing over revenge, holding onto those recordings, replaying everything in my head, it was like he was still controlling my life. He didn't have to be in the room to cast that shadow, I'd been doing it for him. And I thought, if I go through with this, if I put all of it out there, would that really bring me peace? Or would it just tie me to him in a new way? Keeping me bound to the pain he caused? I knew, deep down, that exposing him wouldn't change what he did or undo the hurt. It wouldn't bring back the years I'd lost, the trust he'd shattered, or the version of myself I'd been before all of this. Those things were gone, and no amount of public humiliation was going to restore them. All exposing him would do is open up a whole new wound. A new layer of drama and chaos that I'd have to live with. Not just him. And so, I made my decision. I wasn't going to post the recordings. I wasn't going to put his betrayal on display for everyone to see. Not because he didn't deserve it. Oh, he absolutely did. But because I didn't deserve to be dragged down with him. I didn't deserve to let his mistakes dictate my choices or keep me from moving forward. I was done letting him have that kind of power over me. So, I deleted the recordings, every single one, the messages, the videos, the screenshots, all of it. I thought it would feel like ripping off a band-aid, painful and scary, but instead, it felt freeing. With each deleted file, I felt a little lighter, 
A little less tether to the hurt and anger I'd been carrying around. It was like I was finally clearing out all the emotional clutter he'd left behind. Making room for something new. Something that didn't involve him. Of course, there was a part of me that hesitated. That wanted to keep just one piece of evidence. Just in case. But I knew that would be holding onto the past. Keeping one foot in the door of a life I didn't want anymore. So, I committed. I deleted everything. Leaving no trace of his betrayal that could pull me back into that spiral. It felt like closing a chapter. Locking a door that I didn't need to revisit. When I finally put my phone down. There was a sense of quiet in my mind. Like I'd been carrying this storm around. And it had finally settled. I wasn't angry anymore. Or at least not in the same way. I was exhausted but relieved. Like I'd finally let go of something I'd been clutching onto so tightly that I hadn't realized it was hurting me more than helping me. I won't say that decision fixed everything. It didn't magically erase the pain or make me forget what he did. But it gave me a sense of control. A feeling that I was finally living for myself again. Not reacting to him or his actions. I could look at myself in the mirror and feel proud. Knowing that I'd chosen to put myself first. That I'd taken a step toward reclaiming my life on my own terms. And so, I started to rebuild. Little by little. Day by day. I focused on things that brought me joy. On reconnecting with friends I'd pulled away from. On diving back into work. On rediscovering the pieces of myself that I'd lost along the way. It wasn't always easy. And there were days when the pain felt raw again. Days when I questioned if I'd made the right choice. But I reminded myself that my decision wasn't about him. It was about me. It was about choosing peace over vengeance. About valuing my own sanity more than a moment of satisfaction. I know people will ask why I didn't expose him. Why I didn't make him pay for everything he put me through. Some might say I let him off too easily. That I should have given him the consequences he deserved. But in the end, I realized that the best consequence he could face was losing control over me. Knowing that he doesn't get to define my life anymore. That's my closure. My victory. It's funny. I thought revenge would give me that sense of power. That feeling of justice I'd been craving. But instead, choosing to walk away. To leave it behind. That's what made me feel strong again. I chose myself over the need to make him suffer. And that's a choice I can live with. I can move forward knowing that I did what was right for me. That I took the high road. Not because he deserved it. But because I deserved it. So here I am. Ready to start fresh. To let go of the anger. The hurt. The desire to get even. I don't need that anymore. I have my peace. And that's worth more to me than any momentary satisfaction revenge could have given. Letting go of those recordings felt like a weight had finally been lifted off my shoulders. But moving forward has been its own journey. I won't lie. There are days when I wake up with the ache of everything he put me through. The memories of betrayal still lingering in the back of my mind. Some wounds don't heal overnight. But I keep reminding myself that I didn't walk away from him just to keep living in the past. I chose peace. I chose freedom. And now it's up to me to live that choice every day. There's a strange sense of calm that's settled in. A quiet that fills the spaces where all that anger and pain used to be. I hadn't realized just how much space he was taking up in my mind and my life until I chose to reclaim it. And now, I'm finally figuring out what I want to do with that space. What I want my life to look like without him casting a shadow over everything. I've started to reconnect with friends and family in ways I hadn't before. For so long, I kept so much of my pain hidden. Letting only a few people know what was really going on. Now, it feels good to reach out. To rebuild those relationships without the weight of secrecy or shame. I've found that the people who care about me are willing to understand. To support me without judgment. And that's been a gift I didn't expect. My friends have started inviting me to things again. Making me feel like I'm part of something beyond this story. Beyond him, I'm part of something bigger. Something good. Work has become my escape. But in the best way. For the first time, I'm throwing myself into my career without distraction. Without the constant worry of what's happening behind my back. I've taken on new projects. Made connections. And found fulfillment in being productive and focused. I feel like I'm building something of my own. Something no one can take from me. It's my space. My ambition. My future. And that's a powerful feeling. And then there's the joy of rediscovering the little things. It sounds cliche, I know, but I'd forgotten what it felt like to sit in a coffee shop without checking my phone every five minutes. Or to go for a walk just because it clears my mind. I've started picking up hobbies I'd let fall away over the years. Things I used to love but had somehow stopped doing. Like painting and hiking, these small acts of freedom feel like reclaiming pieces of myself. Pieces that were chipped away over time but never really lost. Of course, there are moments when doubts creep in. When I wonder if I'll ever fully heal. If I'll ever be able to trust someone again. I'm working on that too. Therapy has become part of my life now. A space where I can unravel the layers of what I went through. The ways his manipulation took root and grew over time. It's not easy. Facing those parts of myself that were hurt. Acknowledging the ways I was vulnerable. But with every session, I feel a little stronger. A little more in tune with who I am and who I want to become. Letting go of the need for revenge has allowed me to see myself differently. I no longer define myself as the victim of his betrayal. I'm more than that. I'm someone who survived. Who chose to rise above the hurt. And who decided that my peace mattered more than his punishment. It's a quiet kind of victory. One that no one else might notice. But I feel it deeply. And honestly, that's enough.
People still ask me about him sometimes. They'll bring him up, wondering how I'm doing, if I'm okay, and I can tell they expect me to launch into some story about how terrible things were. How angry I still am, but I don't need to tell those stories anymore. When they ask, I just say, I'm better now, and I mean it, I'm better without him, better for having gone through it and come out the other side. In the end, walking away wasn't just about him or his betrayal, it was about reclaiming myself, about choosing to live a life that's mine and mine alone. I don't know what the future holds, who does, but for the first time in a long time, I feel ready for it. I feel ready to build something new, to create a life that isn't defined by someone else's choices or lies. I've learned that peace isn't a one-time choice, it's something I have to choose every day. And so, that's what I'm doing, I'm waking up each morning, choosing to let go a little more, choosing to focus on the life I want instead of the hurt I left behind. There's a kind of beauty in that, a quiet strength I didn't know I had. And as I move forward, that's what I'm holding onto, not the anger, not the need for revenge, but the peace of knowing I finally chose myself. And honestly, that's the best decision I've ever made. A-I-T-A-H for telling my husband his friend can't come to our house? Isn't it funny how life throws you these curveballs? Usually right when you're least prepared? Looking back, I can't believe I fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. It all started when my husband's friend waltzed into our lives with this big, shining opportunity. Let's call him, buddy. Though, trust me, I've got a few other names I'd prefer to use. So here's the setup. My husband and buddy go way back. Like high school days back. They've always stayed in touch, catching up whenever they could, swapping stories, sharing the occasional beer when Buddy was in town. And me? I never thought much about him. I mean, he was just some guy my husband knew. A little rough around the edges but seemingly harmless. How naive was I? At the time, my husband and I were living a pretty stable life. Nothing fancy, but we had a good routine. We both had decent jobs. Our finances were in order. And we'd managed to save a little. We weren't rolling in money. But we were comfortable. Life was just peaceful. You know, until Buddy showed up with what he pitched as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I still remember the night my husband came home, all excited and wide-eyed. He couldn't stop talking about it. Buddy had apparently come up with a business idea, something to do with construction and renovations, and he wanted my husband on board. Said it was a chance to make real money. He was practically buzzing with excitement. And, to be fair, the idea of earning more was tempting. Who doesn't dream of a better life? Now, I'll admit, part of me was nervous. The move, the job change, none of it sat well with me. But my husband was convinced Buddy knew what he was doing. It's Buddy, he'd say, he's got a good head for this kind of thing. We'll be in this together. And yeah, I wanted to trust his judgment. To believe in this, friend, he valued so much. Besides, Buddy laid it on thick. Promising my husband the world. Practically guaranteeing that we'd all be better off. It was too good to pass up. So, we did it, packed our things, uprooted our lives, and moved to this tiny town where Buddy's business was based. My husband gave up a good job, and I left my position, expecting that we'd be on this new, amazing path any day now. Well, I soon learned that, amazing, was not in the cards for us. The work started quickly enough, and my husband dove in head first. He was working long hours, breaking his back on construction sites, pouring everything he had into this venture. He even shipped in his own money, our money, thinking it was part of the investment. As for Buddy, he was around, but more often than not, he was off handling the business side. Or so he said, I wasn't seeing any of this business side happening, but I kept my mouth shut. But as the months wore on, things started going south fast. Paychecks were delayed. Clients started calling with complaints and we were seeing nothing in our bank account. My husband, bless his heart, kept insisting it would turn around, kept believing in Buddy's promises. But I was starting to see through the cracks. I was noticing that Buddy always had an excuse, always had some convenient explanation for why the money hadn't come through. He was a smooth talker. I'll give him that, but it was becoming clear that he was stringing my husband along. Using him to do all the dirty work while he pocketed whatever money was coming in. Then came the ultimate slap in the face. Not only was Buddy holding onto the money, but he'd started talking down to me whenever I'd press for answers. He'd make snide comments, call me greedy for asking about our cut, tell me I didn't understand how business worked. And the worst part? He started criticizing my looks, calling me fat and ugly to my face, making me feel like I was nothing, like I was the problem. I felt trapped, humiliated, but I kept going along with it, mostly for my husband's sake. I could see the toll it was taking on him too, but he just couldn't let go of his loyalty to Buddy. Things hit rock bottom when the bills started piling up. There wasn't any work available for me in that town beyond fast food. So that's what I did. I went from a solid administrative job to flipping burgers to keep the lights on. I was working late nights, missing out on sleep, all so Buddy could keep his con going. And I'll be honest, it felt like I was watching my whole life fall apart in front of me. My husband had gone from being my partner to being a pawn in someone else's game. And I had no idea how to pull us out of it. What really broke me was when people started showing up at our door. Looking for buddy, debt collectors, clients, even the IRS, they all came calling. 
And since my husband was the face of the business, guess who they directed their questions to? It was mortifying. I was dodging calls, avoiding eye contact with neighbors, feeling like I was suffocating under the weight of someone else's lies. I felt like we'd become prisoners in our own lives, trapped by the mess buddy had created, with no way out in sight. Eventually, I reached my limit. I remember telling my husband that we couldn't keep living like this. That this so-called friend was nothing but a user, a leech sucking the life out of us. And after some hard conversations, he finally saw it too. It was like watching someone come out of a fog, realizing just how deep we'd been dragged down. It wasn't easy for him. He'd known Buddy his whole life. Trusted him like a brother, but he knew I was right. So we left, packed up again, started from scratch, and spent years clawing our way back to stability. We rebuilt everything from the ground up, cut ties with everyone in that town, and somehow managed to come out stronger on the other side. My husband and I worked hard, and through sheer willpower, we finally made something of ourselves again. We even started our own business, a real business that we ran with integrity, with our names on everything, accountable to no one but ourselves. It felt like we'd finally closed the chapter on that nightmare. Buddy was out of our lives, and we'd regained control. I thought I'd never have to think about him again, that he was a ghost from the past, left behind in the ruins of that disaster. Little did I know, though, that he'd find a way to creep back into our lives, like some bad penny that just wouldn't go away. And here I am, years later, standing my ground, knowing I can't let that man back in, no matter how much my husband might want to give him, another chance. Because I remember, I remember every single bit of what we went through because of him. And there's no way I'm letting him have even a sliver of space in our lives ever again. You know, I never thought my life would end up with me working the night shift at a fast food joint just to keep us afloat. I've held down some solid jobs in my day, office jobs. Real paychecks, benefits, the kind of jobs that make you feel secure, like you're building a future. But after moving for Buddy's big opportunity and seeing our finances dwindle to nothing, I didn't have much choice. The town was small, real small, and there weren't many options outside of fast food. So there I was, flipping burgers and running on fumes, doing anything I could to keep a roof over our heads and the bills paid. I'd wake up before dawn, my body aching from another late shift, my heart heavy, knowing that the only reason I was doing this was because of Buddy's empty promises. And what made it worse was seeing my husband work himself to the bone every single day. Just for Buddy to take advantage of him. It felt like watching someone drown while they're being held down by a so-called friend. I wanted to pull him out, to make him see the truth, but it was like he couldn't hear me, couldn't let go of the loyalty he felt toward Buddy. He was blinded by some sense of obligation, and I was just there, picking up the pieces, doing whatever I could to survive. The resentment grew slowly, creeping in like a shadow over everything. It wasn't just Buddy I was mad at. I started feeling a mix of anger and sadness toward my husband too. Every time I'd bring it up, every time I'd point out how Buddy was exploiting him, He'd brush it off, it's just a tough start. He'd say, or, Buddy's got a plan. A plan? The man couldn't plan his way out of a paper bag. It was infuriating, and it left me feeling so alone, like I was fighting this battle by myself. And Buddy didn't make it any easier, when he wasn't brushing me off with some smarmy comment about how I didn't understand business. He was openly disrespectful, he'd say things about my appearance, call me fat, imply that I was just greedy for wanting a fair share of the income. I'd never had someone treat me like that before. And the worst part was knowing that my husband heard some of it and didn't push back. Didn't stand up for me. I know he felt conflicted. Caught between his loyalty to his friend and his love for me. But every time he didn't say anything. It was like another nail in the coffin of our relationship. It made me wonder if he really valued me or if he thought. On some level, that buddy was right. As the weeks dragged on, my patience wore thinner and thinner. We were scraping by, barely managing to cover our bills. And our savings had disappeared into this black hole of a business. I'd go to bed every night exhausted. Dreading the next day, knowing nothing was going to change. And then, one day, the humiliation reached a new level. It started with a knock on the door, someone asking for Buddy. Someone he owed money to. Then another knock, this time a client demanding answers about a job that hadn't been done. Eventually, we even had someone from the IRS showing up, asking questions about unpaid taxes for the business. A business that my husband was now the face of because Buddy was conveniently nowhere to be found. It was unbearable. I couldn't believe we let it get this far. Let him drag us down this deep. And through all of it, I just kept working those late nights, kept trying to make up for what Buddy was taking. I felt like I'd become a stranger in my own life, a shell of the person I used to be, going through the motions just to keep us afloat. I'd always thought of myself as someone who could handle anything, but this, this was breaking me. I can still remember the day I finally hit my breaking point. I'd just come home from a long shift, my feet sore, my mind numb, only to find a stack of bills waiting for me on the kitchen table. Final notices, overdue payments, all reminders of just how far we'd fallen. I looked at my husband, who was sitting there, staring blankly at the bills, and I realized that this was our life now. This was what Buddy had done to us. And the worst part? My husband still hadn't let go of his loyalty to him. It took everything in me to have the conversation that night, 
to tell my husband that we couldn't keep going like this, that we had to leave. I remember the look in his eyes, hurt, betrayal, like I was asking him to give up on a piece of himself. But I couldn't let him drag us down any further. I couldn't keep sacrificing my sanity, my dignity, for a man who had no respect for either of us. Eventually, he agreed. I think he finally saw the toll it was taking. Not just on me, but on us, on our marriage. He realized that Buddy wasn't a friend, he was a parasite. Leeching off us, leaving nothing but destruction in his wake. We packed up our things and left that town, leaving Buddy behind like the bad dream he was. The road to recovery was slow. Starting over felt like climbing a mountain with a boulder on our backs. But we did it. We found jobs, worked hard, saved every penny we could, and rebuilt our lives. And somehow, through all of it, my husband and I found each other again. It wasn't easy. I had to let go of a lot of anger. Had to forgive him for putting us in that situation. And he had to earn my trust back. But we did it. Little by little, we became a team again. Partners in a way we hadn't been in years. In time, we even started our own business. Something that was truly ours. With our names on the door. Our hard work behind it. And as we grew, as we saw the fruits of our labor, I felt a sense of pride that I hadn't felt in years. We'd been through hell, but we'd come out on the other side stronger, smarter, and determined never to let anyone take advantage of us like that again. For a long time, I thought I was over it. I thought I'd left that pain and humiliation behind, buried it in the past along with every memory of Buddy. But now, with him creeping back into our lives, all those feelings have resurfaced. It's like that wound has been reopened, raw and painful all over again. And I know one thing for sure, I'm not going back to that nightmare. Not now, not ever. Moving on after that nightmare with Buddy was like learning to breathe again. Slow and steady, once we left that town, it was as though I peeled off a layer of shame I hadn't even known I was carrying. My husband and I were finally free of that man's influence, no longer tethered to his endless web of excuses and empty promises. It felt surreal, but it was a clean slate, and we both needed that more than anything. Starting from scratch was tough, of course. Every dollar counted, and we had to learn to live with even less. I didn't jump straight back into an office job. There weren't a lot of openings that didn't make me feel like I was just settling again. But I found work that kept us going, slowly building back what we'd lost and carving out a routine that was ours and ours alone. Each payday, each little milestone, felt like proof that we could stand on our own two feet. That we didn't need anyone else to prop us up or make things happen for us. It took a while for my husband and me to find our groove again. There was an awkwardness between us in the beginning, something that made even little conversations feel heavy, like we were both trying not to mention the past. I think he felt the weight of what had happened as much as I did, if not more. There was guilt there, and as much as I wanted to let it go, I also wanted to make sure he'd learned something from it. I didn't want us to go through all of that only for him to end up trusting the wrong people again. One day, though, something just clicked. I remember we were sitting in our tiny living room, sorting through bills and going over a budget we'd set for the month. It sounds mundane, but it was in that moment that I realized how much we'd changed. We were working as a team, making choices together, holding ourselves accountable to each other. There were no secrets, no, friend, leeching off us, no shadow lurking over our relationship. It was just us, figuring it out one step at a time. And for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful, I felt proud. We'd both learned from that experience, though in different ways, I learned to speak up, to stand my ground even when it felt uncomfortable. There's a part of me that wishes I'd been able to do that back then. But there's no point in dwelling on that now. What mattered was that I found my voice, and I was never going to let anyone silence it again, not even my husband. If it came down to that, my husband, on the other hand, learned that loyalty doesn't mean blind trust. It doesn't mean sacrificing your values or allowing someone to drag you down just because you've known them for years. I could see that change in him over time, as he became more cautious, more protective of what we'd worked so hard to rebuild. He was no longer the guy who'd drop everything to chase some half-baked opportunity. And for that, I was grateful. Eventually, we reached a point where we had enough saved up to take a chance on our own business. It was scary, diving back into the world of entrepreneurship after everything that had happened. But this time was different. This time, it was just us, with no one else's promises hanging over our heads. We took it slow, building our business step by step, treating every dollar like it mattered, because it did. We'd learned the hard way what happens when you put your future in someone else's hands. And we weren't about to repeat that mistake. And you know what? It worked. Our business grew, not in some flashy, overnight success kind of way, but in a steady, reliable way that gave us both a sense of pride. Every contract signed, every new client we landed, felt like a small victory, a reminder of how far we'd come. And as the years went by, we finally felt like we'd built something real, something that couldn't just be taken away by someone else's poor decisions. When we bought our house, it felt like a symbol of everything we'd overcome, standing in the empty rooms, imagining the life we'd fill it with. I felt like I'd finally closed the chapter on that painful part of our past. We were no longer the people who'd been taken advantage of, who'd scraped by on minimum wage and broken dreams. We were a couple who'd survived who'd rebuilt their lives from the ground up. And I was proud of us, of both of us.
So, yes, I thought I was over it. I really did. Buddy was nothing more than a bad memory. Someone I'd buried deep and planned never to think about again. I'd moved on, learned the hard-earned lessons, and created a life that made me happy. We were strong, secure, and everything felt, steady. For the first time in years, I felt like we had a life that was truly ours. But you know how life is. It loves to throw a wrench in your plans just when you think you've got it all figured out. Out of the blue, Buddy reappeared. One day, out of nowhere, he was back in my husband's messages. Just like he'd never left. Like the years hadn't happened and he could waltz right back into our lives without a care in the world. It was like being splashed with ice cold water. Everything came rushing back, the lies, the humiliation, the anger, all those years I'd spent working to move on, to let go, and suddenly it felt like it was all right there, right in front of me, as if no time had passed at all. And worse, my husband didn't seem as horrified by Buddy's reappearance as I did. In fact, he seemed open to it, even curious about what Buddy had been up to. That terrified me, I could see the old patterns lurking in the background, the loyalty, the history that my husband felt bound to honor, and even though he'd promised he'd learned from it, part of me worried that history might repeat itself if I didn't stand my ground. So here I am again, feeling all those old emotions bubble up, trying to keep a grip on the life we've built and wondering if my husband truly understands what letting Buddy back in would mean. I know what I went through, what I sacrificed to get here, and I refuse to let Buddy, or anyone else, threaten that again. It's time for boundaries, hard and fast, because this time, I'm not backing down, I've learned my lessons, and there's no way I'm letting our hard one piece slip away. It's like some bad horror movie plot, isn't it? The villain vanishes, everything seems fine, and then, just when you think life's finally normal, he pops back up, that's exactly how it felt when Buddy reached out. It started with a single message, casual, like he was some old Buddy reconnecting after years apart. But to me, it was a flashback to one of the darkest periods of my life. At first, my husband didn't say much about it, he just mentioned offhand that Buddy had reached out, and my stomach sank, Buddy had somehow found himself in trouble again, though he hadn't shared the details right away, something about, needing a little help, because he'd lost his place, I was instantly suspicious, after all, this was Buddy, his life was one elaborate story after another, each more outrageous than the last, with him always managing to paint himself as the unfortunate hero caught in bad luck, I could just picture the look on his face as he spun the tale, expecting sympathy, a warm welcome, maybe even an offer to stay with us until he got back on his feet. I tried to brush it off, telling myself my husband would never get sucked in again, but I started noticing how Buddy's messages became a regular thing, popping up every few weeks. They were loaded with the same old hints, subtle but obvious enough. He was down on his luck. He'd been mistreated. He just needed a break. I knew exactly what was coming. It was only a matter of time before he asked for more than just sympathy. Sure enough, one day my husband sat me down and said, Buddy wants to come visit. I felt my jaw clench immediately, my stomach twisting up in knots. He wanted Buddy to come over, bring his kids so they could play with ours. Are you kidding me? I could hardly believe what I was hearing. This man, the same man who had put us through years of chaos and financial ruin, was being invited into my home. Where my children lived, as if he were a long-lost friend who just needed a little kindness. My husband went on, saying that Buddy claimed he'd changed, and that he just needed a friend. And here was the kicker. He wanted me to let Buddy come into our house sit at our table, and, reconnect, it felt like a punch in the gut, how could he even consider it, I thought back to everything Buddy had put us through, to the days when I'd worked myself to the bone to make up for his lies, to the countless nights of stress and anxiety, and now, after all that, I was supposed to roll out the red carpet and let him back in, I tried to keep my cool, to explain to my husband why this was unacceptable, I reminded him of the debts, the insults, the betrayal, how Buddy had used us and left us to clean up his mess, but my husband wouldn't budge, people can change, he said, he even had the nerve to throw in, don't you think he deserves a second chance, I couldn't believe it, he was talking like this was some ordinary guy down on his luck, not a man who had shattered our lives and nearly ruined our marriage, it didn't take long for me to realize that he was stuck in this guilt cycle, feeling responsible for Buddy, I could see it all over his face, he'd built Buddy up in his head as someone who just made a few mistakes, someone who deserved forgiveness because of their long history together, and I could feel myself spiraling, knowing that this was just history repeating itself, that my husband was going to fall right back into the same pattern if I didn't put my foot down. When I told him, point blank, that buddy wasn't welcome in our house, I could see the anger flash across his face. He accused me of being unforgiving, of making his friendships difficult, of holding onto the past. That was the moment I lost it. Holding onto the past? I wanted to scream, buddy isn't the past, he's the one who won't go away. Instead, I took a deep breath and told him exactly how I felt. I reminded him that we were talking about a man who'd dragged us through financial ruin, who'd insulted me, and who'd cost us years of our lives. I wasn't going to let him waltz back in and do it all over again. But my husband didn't see it that way. He just looked at me, disappointment written all over his face, like I was the one who'd failed to see reason. He said I was being unfair, 
that I was putting him in a position where he had to choose between his marriage and his friend. Well, fine, I thought, let him choose, I was tired of being the bad guy, tired of feeling like I had to justify protecting our home, our peace, our kids, the worst part was that, deep down, I knew he was torn, part of him understood where I was coming from, but the other part, the part that felt tied to Buddy out of loyalty, was strong. I knew my husband wasn't a bad man, he wasn't malicious, or heartless, or anything like that, he was just, loyal to a fault, and he was still carrying some sense of responsibility for Buddy, thinking he owed him something but that didn't make it any easier to deal with. It was then I realized that if I didn't stand firm, if I didn't keep saying no, this could easily spiral out of control. Buddy would worm his way back in. One, visit, would turn into another, and before I knew it, we'd be back in the same nightmare we'd just barely escaped. I was determined to protect the life we'd built, no matter how my husband tried to paint me as the unreasonable one. I wasn't going to sit by and let history repeat itself, not for my husband, not for Buddy, and definitely not for the sake of some twisted idea of friendship. And that's where things are now, a standoff. My husband feels caught in the middle, torn between his loyalty to me and his misguided sense of duty to a man who has done nothing but drag him down. I'm standing my ground, holding firm on this boundary I've set. I know it's creating tension, and maybe he resents me for it. But I also know that I can't let Buddy anywhere near our home. Not after everything he's done. So here I am, wondering if I'm the one in the wrong, if I'm somehow the bad guy for protecting my peace. But I can't help but think that if my husband truly valued what we've built, He'd understand why I'm doing this. He'd see that this isn't about control or holding grudges. This is about survival, about not letting the same toxic influence back into our lives. I've come too far, sacrificed too much, to let Buddy undo it all. And if my husband can't see that, well, then maybe we're dealing with more than just a bad friend. You'd think standing my ground would feel good, empowering. Maybe, but honestly, it's left me feeling hollow and torn. Like I'm somehow letting my husband down by refusing to let Buddy back in. It's a strange feeling, loving someone deeply but knowing you're standing on opposite sides of something that matters so much. Here I am, holding onto this boundary for dear life, while the person I love is starting to look at me like I'm the problem. And it's hard to shake that, even when I know I'm right. It's like I'm walking a tightrope between my loyalty to my husband and my responsibility to protect myself and our family. On one hand, I know why my husband wants to help Buddy. He's always been the kind of person who believes in second chances. Maybe even third and fourth ones if he's close enough to someone. And I can't blame him for that it's one of the things I love about him. But on the other hand, I've had to learn the hard way that my kindness and loyalty have limits. Boundaries, as they say, are a form of love, I believe that now more than ever, but it's hard to keep holding that line when it's causing so much friction between us. Part of me feels guilty, as though I'm forcing him to make a choice he never wanted to face. Every time I say, no, to Buddy, it's like I'm reminding my husband of his past mistakes, of the blind loyalty that got us into this mess in the first place. And I can see it in his eyes. The way he sometimes looks away when I bring up Buddy, like he's tired of the whole subject, maybe even a little ashamed, but I'm not trying to shame him, I just want him to understand how deeply Buddy's betrayal hurt me, and how much I need to feel safe and secure in my own home. Then, of course, there's the nagging voice in the back of my head, whispering that maybe I'm overreacting, that maybe people can change and that I'm refusing to give Buddy a chance to prove it. It's a quiet voice, one I try to ignore, but it's there, I wonder if I'm holding onto my anger too tightly, letting it cloud my judgment. I start questioning myself, asking if maybe I'm the one who needs to let go, who needs to forgive, after all, it's been years, and we're not the same people we were back then, but every time I even consider it, every time I try to imagine Buddy sitting in my living room, laughing with my husband and playing with our kids, that old feeling of dread creeps back in, my body remembers the fear, the shame, the stress, and I can't shake it, it's not just about forgiveness or letting go of the past, it's about survival, I went through hell because of Buddy, because of his lies and manipulation, and I had to claw my way out of it piece by piece. And as much as I'd like to think I've healed, I know I'm still carrying scars from that time. Scars that sting when I imagine him anywhere near my family, as if his mere presence could unravel everything I've worked so hard to rebuild. The worst part, though, is feeling like my husband doesn't fully understand why I'm so adamant. He's apologized for the past, promised that he wouldn't let Buddy take advantage of him again, but it's not just about him making promises, it's about me knowing that I'm safe, that our home is a place of peace. Not a revolving door for people who bring chaos and destruction. I can't go back to feeling like I'm the only one holding everything together. I can't be the only person in this relationship who sees Buddy for who he really is. Sometimes I wonder if my husband truly values my feelings. If he understands just how hard it is for me to say no. I can tell he's frustrated. Like he thinks I'm making this a bigger deal than it needs to be. He even hinted once that maybe I was projecting my unresolved anger onto Buddy. Turning him into some kind of villain because I hadn't fully processed the past. I can't lie, hearing that hurt. It felt like he was dismissing the trauma I went through, like he was saying my pain was just a figment of my imagination. And that's when I realized something, maybe my husband still doesn't get it. 
Maybe he still sees Buddy as a friend who made mistakes. Not as the man who took advantage of our trust and left us in financial ruin. He can separate Buddy's actions from his character. I can't. I've seen the kind of damage Buddy can do. And I'm not willing to gamble on the hope that he's somehow changed. Not with my family on the line. So here I am, torn between standing up for myself and feeling like I'm tearing apart my marriage. I never thought I'd be in this position. Never thought I'd have to make such a hard decision. It's like I'm stuck between protecting my peace and protecting my relationship. And I don't know how to do both. I wish my husband could see that I'm not doing this to hurt him. That I'm not trying to control him or dictate his friendships. I just want to feel safe in my own life. In my own home. And if that means being the bad guy for a little while. Then so be it. There's a part of me that wonders if I'll ever truly get past this. If I'll ever reach a point where Buddy's presence doesn't make me feel like I'm standing on quicksand. But for now, I know one thing. I'm not letting him back in. I'm not giving up my peace for a man who's done nothing but bring chaos into our lives. And if my husband can't understand that, if he can't see why I'm so protective of what we've built, then maybe we have bigger problems than just Buddy. I want to believe that we can get through this. That my husband will come to understand why I feel the way I do. But in the meantime, I'm holding my ground, even if it means causing tension. Because the truth is, I can't afford to go back to that place again. I refuse to lose myself in someone else's mess. Not after everything I've fought to regain. When it came down to it, I had no choice but to draw the line. I told my husband flat out, Buddy is not coming into this house. He's not welcome, he's not trusted, and I don't care if that makes me look like the bad guy. For the first time in years, I felt the strength of my own conviction. That quiet resolve that comes from knowing you're doing what you need to protect yourself and your family. It wasn't easy telling him, though, the look on his face, hurt, disappointment, a flicker of anger, it seared into my mind. He told me I was being unreasonable, that I was letting my grudge overshadow the chance for Buddy to prove he'd changed. He asked me, don't you believe in second chances? And the way he said it, it was like he thought I was heartless, incapable of compassion. But here's the thing, I do believe in second chances, just not when someone's already burned through theirs. Buddy didn't just make a mistake, he made a conscious choice over and over again, to take advantage of us, to drain us, and to drag us down with him. Forgiving a friend for a one-off slip is one thing, but this, this was betrayal on a level that changed my life, and I refused to let it happen again. I explained to my husband, as calmly as I could, that this wasn't about grudges or bitterness, it was about boundaries. I told him that I've spent years rebuilding myself, finding my strength, and creating a home that feels safe. Inviting Buddy back into that sacred space would be like setting a fox loose in a henhouse. I told him, if you want to meet Buddy somewhere else, fine, but he is not stepping foot into our home. My husband sat there in silence for a long time, staring at the table, his jaw clenched. I could tell he didn't agree with me, that he thought I was making this into something bigger than it needed to be. But I couldn't back down, not this time. My peace was worth more than his nostalgia, worth more than his need to fix something that was beyond repair. And if I'm honest, setting that boundary felt, liberating, like I was finally reclaiming my voice, saying out loud what I'd been feeling for years. I realized that for too long, I'd been bending, compromising, letting things slide in the name of keeping the peace. But what about my peace? What about my sense of security? My right to decide who I let into my life? I deserved to feel safe. And if my husband couldn't see that, then we had bigger issues to deal with than just Buddy. That night, after we'd both had some space, he came back to me, softer this time. He said he understood where I was coming from, even if he didn't agree with it. But he didn't want to let Buddy go entirely. Not yet. He wanted to give him a chance to explain himself to see if he'd changed, and he wanted me to be okay with that. I had to think long and hard about it. Part of me wanted to just cut Buddy out completely, to shut that door and never look back. But the reality was, my husband's loyalty to his friend was strong, maybe as strong as his loyalty to me. So I made a compromise, one that felt fair to both of us. I told him he could meet with Buddy somewhere else, on neutral ground, but that was the limit. Buddy would never set foot in our home, and he would never be a part of our personal lives again. It was a difficult conversation. But my husband agreed, he could see that this was a boundary I wasn't willing to budge on. And to his credit, he respected that, I could tell he was disappointed, maybe even a little resentful, but he understood, and in that moment, I felt a sense of relief, a weight lifting as I realized that I protected my peace. My home, without losing my marriage in the process. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel a pang of sadness. 2. This was a wedge between us, something that would always be there, lurking in the background, and I couldn't shake the feeling that. In some small way, I'd lost a part of him to his misguided loyalty. It was bittersweet, standing firm in my decision, knowing that it might always be a point of contention between us. Even so, I knew I'd made the right choice. I'd set a boundary, a line in the sand that Buddy could never cross, and I felt stronger for it. This was my life, my home, my family, and I had the right to protect it from anything or anyone who posed a threat. Even if that meant saying no to someone my husband cared about. It wasn't about control or trying to isolate my husband from his friends. It was about respect. Respect for the life we'd built. 
the sacrifices I'd made, and the years of healing I'd endured. I'd worked too hard to get here, and I wasn't going to let anyone take that away from me. No matter how charming or apologetic they claimed to be. As we went to bed that night, I lay awake, staring at the ceiling, feeling the quiet satisfaction of knowing I'd stood up for myself. But there was a part of me, a small, nagging part, that wondered if I'd truly done the right thing. If I'd somehow put a crack in my marriage by refusing to let go of the past. But as I drifted off to sleep, one thought kept me grounded. I deserved this boundary. I'd earned it, and I would hold onto it, no matter what anyone else thought. Because at the end of the day, choosing to protect my peace was the most important decision I could make. In the days that followed, I felt a mixture of relief and uncertainty. I'd set my boundary, sure, and my husband had agreed to it. But the weight of everything we'd been through, what Buddy had done, and how it had nearly broken us, still lingered. It's funny, really, you think once you've put your foot down, things will feel settled, that the decision alone will bring peace. But that's not always how it works. Sometimes, even after choosing what's right for you, there's still a whole lot to work through. The first time my husband went to meet Buddy, I felt a strange tension. I knew I'd made the right call by not letting Buddy into our home. But watching my husband walk out that door to see him still stirred up so much in me. Memories of all we'd gone through, the deception, the hardship, the painful nights of doubt, all of it felt so fresh again. Part of me wanted to beg him not to go, to keep Buddy out of our lives completely. But I knew that was my own hurt talking. My husband needed this closure, even if I didn't think it would change anything. When he came back that night, he didn't say much. He looked drained, like he'd seen a ghost. I waited, giving him space, letting him gather his thoughts before he opened up. And when he finally did, his words were exactly what I'd hoped to hear. He told me that meeting Buddy again had been strange, like talking to a shadow of the person he'd once known. He realized that the loyalty he'd been holding onto wasn't to Buddy as he was now, but to some idealized version of him from the past. He'd clung to the memory of Buddy, not the reality, and seeing Buddy as he was now, a man still struggling, still making excuses, still looking for a way out of his problems rather than a way through them, made my husband see the truth. Buddy hadn't changed. And maybe he never would. That moment felt like a breakthrough for both of us. I could see that he finally understood the strength it had taken for me to say, no, to Buddy. The resolve it took to protect what we'd built. And I think he was starting to see why I needed that boundary. Why it wasn't about holding onto anger or grudges but about honoring everything we'd fought to create. Over time, my husband and I talked more openly about what had happened. About how Buddy's betrayal had affected us both in ways we hadn't fully acknowledged before. For him, it was a lesson in letting go. In recognizing that loyalty isn't blind. That it doesn't mean clinging to someone who no longer aligns with your values. And for me, it was about self-worth. About trusting my own instincts. My own right to say, no, when something didn't feel right. Looking back, I realize now that setting that boundary was one of the most powerful things I've ever done. It wasn't just about keeping Buddy out of our house. It was about reclaiming my right to protect my peace. My home, and my family, it was about telling myself, once and for all, that my needs mattered, that I didn't have to bend over backward to accommodate someone who'd hurt me. I had the right to draw that line, to put myself and my family first. I'd like to say things between my husband and me went back to normal after that. But, normal, felt like a moving target. We were both changed by the experience, by the scars it left on our relationship. But maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. We'd been through the fire, and now we were stronger more resilient, we'd learned hard lessons, not just about who to trust, but about trusting ourselves, about honoring our own needs even when it's uncomfortable. And as for Buddy, well, my husband hasn't seen him since that last meeting. He's still out there, I'm sure, still hustling, still looking for his next opportunity, but he's no longer a part of our lives, and he never will be again. That chapter is closed. Sometimes, when I think about the road we've taken, the sacrifices and struggles, I feel a wave of gratitude. I'm grateful that we survived it, that we found our way back to each other. That we had the strength to rebuild. I'm grateful that I found my voice. That I learned to trust my own judgment. That I had the courage to set a boundary and stick to it. No matter the cost. In the end, I've realized that self-worth isn't something you earn or prove. It's something you claim. Something you own without apology. It's knowing, deep down, that you have the right to protect yourself. To create a life that feels safe and fulfilling. And if that means saying, no, to people who don't respect you or honor your values. Then so be it. My husband and I still have our ups and downs. But there's a new layer of understanding between us now. A respect for each other's boundaries that wasn't there before. I know he sees me differently. Not just as his wife. But as someone who stands firm in what she believes. And I see him differently too. As someone who learned a hard lesson about loyalty and trust. We're both a little wiser. A little scarred. But stronger for it. So, was I the bad guy for setting that boundary? For saying no to buddy? Maybe to some people. I was. But I can live with that. Because at the end of the day. I did what I had to do for my own well-being. For my family's peace. For the life we've worked so hard to build. And if that makes me the bad guy in someone else's story. Then so be it. In my own story. I'm the one who took back control. Who stood up for herself. Who refused to let anyone. 
even a lifelong friend, jeopardize the life she'd built. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. Not for anyone.